thank you all for coming tonight. Tonight's uh, forum will be brought to us by the uh, Arizonans for a New Economy, which are partners in justice with Mountain Vista Unitarian Universalist Congregation, uh, the building in which you sit. I am the minister that serves that congregation. My name is Ron Ferris, for those of you who don't know. Uh, for those of you who do know, hello, thank you for coming. Um, so Arizonans for New Economy uh, was founded and is led by Jim Hanley and Pamela Powers Hanley. Jim is a registered investment advisor. He's been so for 21 years. He's also a member of the Independent Audit and Performance Commission for the City of Tucson. Uh, Pamela Powers Hanley is a ma the managing editor for the American Journal of Medicine and a political blogger. Uh, Arizona's for a New Economy is a nonprofit and was founded. This is their first year, and so we are we are on the ground floor with them, and it's very exciting, more exciting than I could have hoped. In fact, uh, we also are privileged to have uh, Senator Steve Farley with us tonight. Uh, you all, at least those of you who live in this district, saw fit to re-elect him this year. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, Steve has been in the legislature since 2006. He uh, first served as a senator in 2012, has been re-elected once again, and is now sitting on the uh, Financial Institutions Committee, which is, of course, extremely important to tonight's topic. He's also on the Appropriations Committee and is the ranking Democrat on the Finance Committee. Uh, so we are so pleased to have our guest tonight. And we're really excited to be here, and we really want to thank uh, Reverend Ron and the Mountain Vista Church for adopting us as a social justice cause, because uh, Jim and I are real evangelists for public banking. You'll figure that out tonight. I'm going to do sort of a why we think that this is a good idea for Arizona, and then he's going to get into more of the technical, sort of the how, you know, financially, because that's his background, and my background's in PR, so I'm going to sell you, and he's going to tell you how it can happen, okay? <laughs> so, anyway, we're going to get going here. So, um, next slide. Unfortunately, I can't change it from here. So, anyway, uh, the first thing I want to let you guys know is that uh, what the politicians are saying, not Steve, though, because Steve's an honest guy, is that that uh, we don't have enough money. Okay, so Arizona really doesn't have enough money, but we do have money that's sitting on Wall Street and being invested on Wall Street. And so the idea that we need to tighten our belts, uh, austerity is a lie, okay? And so what, what the government is saying is that they have to cut spending, they have to lay off workers, they have to raise taxes on the poor and cut taxes for corporations in order to stimulate the economy. They want to sell off the public assets like our Capitol buildings in Phoenix that got sold off and cut, cut, cut. So when you, when you cut all these things, you slow the economy down and you're shrinking it rather than growing it. Okay, next slide. So with the, the uh, budget lies of austerity, uh, there's, there's no uh, rescue for Main Street. Okay, uh, the, the uh, regular people are uh, losing their good, good uh, paying jobs that they used to have, the full-time jobs that, we're, that existed before the crash, and they're getting part-time low-wage jobs. And so people are hurting, local businesses are starved for cash, cities and states are starved for cash, and so what we're saying is that there's plenty of money, and the problem is that the money is on Wall Street. Uh, cities and states around the country have rainy day funds, and those rainy day funds are usually held by a Wall Street bank. And in the case of Arizona, it's the Bank of America, right Jim? Bank of America. And so Bank of America has the taxpayer funds and they are investing them on Wall Street for the benefit of the shareholders of Bank of America, not for the benefit of the people who live in Arizona. So the idea of public banking is that we bring our money back to the state of Arizona, establish a state bank, or again, you'll hear tonight from Jim, the city of Tucson could also establish a city bank with their rainy day funds. And so the idea is that they'll save fees, because they're paying fees for the bank to Bank of America to hold all that money, they'll save fees and they'll be able to invest it modestly, locally, rather than gambling it on Wall Street. Next slide. 
So this is a this is a graphic kind of shows the the current system. So you know here you are the taxpayer. You're paying your taxes to the state. The state sends it over to Wall Street to hold. They invest it in derivatives and all kinds of crazy stuff on Wall Street. And then uh, we get just a tiny, modest return in, uh, uh, on our investment because it's, it's uh, made so safe, and Jim will go into more details about how safe it is. It's made so safe that we really basically don't make any money on it. Who makes money on it is the uh, shareholders of Bank of America. Currently less than 1% on the rate base. Yes, yeah, so very little. So I'm going to tell just briefly about the different types of banks, because we're going to be talking about um, commercial banks and credit unions and other types of institutions tonight. Um, so the, the Wall Street banks and the community banks would be considered commercial banks. They have different rules uh, uh, for their lending and things like that, but basically they're beholding to their stockholders. The, the big thing with community banks is that uh, we found out from the local first people that community banks are more likely to lend locally that the Wall Street banks are really not lending locally in Arizona. A lot of small businesses, this is an Oregon study, a lot of small businesses, when they want to expand, they can't get money from a bank, and so they're using credit cards, you know. And so if you use credit cards to, you know, paint your building or put on addition or add a new product line, and you miss a payment, you know, your credit card's going to go from, what, 10% maybe, if you're lucky, to 29% really fast. And so uh, credit for small businesses is a real problem. So... Oh, next slide, Ron. <laughs> so credit unions, a lot of people ask us about credit unions because we're envisioning the Public Bank of Arizona or the Public Bank of Tucson to be primarily sort of a banker's bank. And so it wouldn't really, um, it wouldn't compete with things like uh, the uh, regular, regular community banks or credit unions for like passbook savings or auto loans or things like that or even a, a postal bank. Though you would still get your personal services like your checking account, your credit card, and your and your home mortgage and things like that. You would still get that like where you do now. What the public bank does is that it puts more money into the system to have different types of loans, and we'll get into that. So uh, one thing, though, with credit unions is that they can do only very small business loans. And so uh, they're still more on the, what we call the personal service end. Next slide. So but with public banks, like the movie says, you know, they'll create um, credit they're not owned by shareholders or members, they're owned by us. So if it's the city of Tucson bank, it's owned by the city of Tucson uh, residents. It's our money. And in Arizona, it would be the state bank would be owned by us. And so the, the way the state of uh, North Dakota, the way their bank is, is, uh, was organized is that their lending has to be in the public interest. So a lot of people say, oh my God, we don't want to have the legislature control the bank. You know, who knows what they'll do with the money? So what if you have a mission that it has to serve the public interest, it's not going to be something where they can just, you know, give the money to some cronies or, or give, give tra tax base or something like that. There, is, there are criteria on the lending, and it is supposed to benefit the people, okay, or benefit the state. So next, uh, next slide. And so this one is just like a quick comparison. And like I said, the, the public banks are going to invest in taxpayer funds for the, uh, locally for the public good. It's for like infrastructure projects like bridges and roads and potholes and all that. Uh, one of the things that we're proposing also is that there be consumer debt relief where there's a lot of people with like large, uh, you know, student loans. You know, there's some people that... I have a friend who's like in her early 30s, and she just got married again. She's got a kid from a previous marriage. Uh, she's making good money. She and her new husband, they both have jobs. But he has $950 a month student loan. So they can't, you know, they're, they're both in their 30s, you know. And so it's like they can't, buy, they can't qualify for a house. They tried to have the bank refinance the loan, and they said no, not for any particular reason. But they said, no, you're going to pay us $950. And um, so they, they can't qualify for a, a house or a car. They don't. They want to start a family, you know. And it, but they're they're being strapped by that debt. So we think that the public bank should have some sort of consumer relief or refinancing, like for toxic mortgages or student loans. Because what if that that couple, you know, they had their nine hundred and fifty dollars a month, you know, refinanced to two hundred dollars a month. You know, that would completely change their lives. They'd have another seven hundred fifty dollars a month in their pockets to spend, you know, to go downtown and buy a nice meal at one of those fancy restaurants or to buy a car or to qualify for a home loan. So these are the things. We want the public bank to 
help with infrastructure and state things and small businesses, but we also think that they should have a people angle to help people because there's a lot of people living in poverty in Arizona, especially down here in southern Arizona. So, next slide. So, these are my top ten ways that uh, public banking can help uh, Arizona. Next slide. So, number ten, and this is, this is sort of in order of importance, but this is a really important one, is to, re to finance infrastructure projects. Right now, the, the state's infrastructure is crumbling. You know, uh, it's not just the potholes here in Tucson, but we have unsafe bridges and things like that because, because of austerity that, that repairs have been put off. And we know from uh, people like at the Chamber of Commerce, they're saying, okay, tax cuts are nice for corporations, but we really think that, you know, states, if, uh, to be attractive, you have to have a solid infrastructure and good public education. So anyway, that our crumbling infrastructure hurts our competitiveness. And Steve will like this, because the other thing, the reason I want to have infrastructure projects is someday I want that commuter train between Tucson and Phoenix, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So. The study's coming out this spring, finally. Good. Yeah, we'll make that happen. So number number nine is creating good paying jobs. So obviously, oh, sorry, oh, you're, you're up with me. I'll count with you. Okay. okay. <laughs> number nine is creating good paying jobs. Obviously those infrastructure jobs would be good, good construction jobs. Uh, but you'll see that in these other points, there are also other, other types of jobs that could be created. For example, if we boost community banks by, by running, running money through them, there's going to be more, more jobs in the banking sector, sector, right? And if small businesses are, are given money to expand, there's going to be more jobs with those small businesses. So this is going to have a ripple effect to, to bring back good paying jobs to our state. Next one. So the uh, public banking system, you saw that other little graphic where the, the money goes to Wall Street and then that's it. This is, this is how the public banking system would work. So here you still have the taxpayer giving his, money, his taxes to the state. You have the, uh, you have the state bank sending it out to infrastructure projects. And what they're going to be doing is they're actually going to be making money and creating jobs with the taxpayer money rather than just having it warehoused and, and invested on Wall Street. Okay, number eight. <laughs> so uh, the other thing is that, you know, like I said earlier, that small businesses are starved for cash. Uh, we've had uh, some conversations with the people at Local First, and they, they agree with this, that, that uh, small businesses uh, in Arizona are looking for, for money to expand, you know. Uh, we can, right now the Wall Street banks aren't lending to them, but if we can take these, these businesses that are born and raised in Arizona or born and raised in Tucson, you know, they, they, the local first idea is that you should look and see what your community has and grow those things rather than trying to, uh, you know, compete with another uh, city or state for another call center or another IBM or another Wiser Lock or any of these other businesses that came here and left, okay? So the, the idea is that, you know, look and see what we've got. What have we got in Tucson? We've got a lot of artists. We've got a lot of musicians. As Al Perry says, we've got cactus. Well, the cactus isn't a joke, you know. There's a, almost all of the pharmaceuticals that are on the uh, market today started with a plant. You know, what if we gave a, 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 a seed grant to somebody at the University of Arizona to go out and start testing all these, all these desert plants? I bet they haven't tested them all. And to see what, what kind of uh, chemical reactions that they could cause. You know, so there's, there's a lot of things that we could do that... Um, that will, you know, generate business and generate uh, money and, and jobs in the economy. Number seven, uh, strengthen the community banks. In Arizona, our community banks are going out of business. In North Dakota, North Dakota has the population of Pima County, right? And so in, in Arizona, all of Arizona, we have 23 uh, banking type institutions, right? It's not like branches. These are uh, distinct institutions. North Dakota has 87. They have the population of Pima County and they have almost, what, four, three or four times as many banks as we do because they have all this money churning through the economy. And it's not just all fracking, okay? They had money before they had fracking. <laughs> Number six, uh, law for, <coughs> low, offer low-cost student loans. This is another thing that um, North Dakota does. It, so if you're a resident of North Dakota and you want to go to college, you can get a low-cost loan from the Bank of North Dakota, 
or they also have refinancing for other loans, and so this is a really good thing for the students. You know, the tuition keeps going up and up and up and up and up in Arizona, but if they could get a low-cost loan, uh, it, it would help them out tremendously. They wouldn't be strapped with cash. I don't know if you know, but like student loans, a lot of them aren't even excused by by death. So if you had, a, so if you're if you so co-signed on your uh, your kids' loans and they die before you, you still have to pay their debt. You know, so you know. Wall Street gets excused, but students are not getting excused, and they're really getting buried in debt. Number five, excuse refinance personal debt. Now, me, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person I would say, you know, just buy up all that debt like strike debt does and excuse it. Because you can buy up debt for <coughs> pennies on the dollar. I don't know. How many of you have heard of strike debt? Strike debt grew out, of, grew out of the Occupy movement, and basically what they're doing, they're mostly looking at student loans. They're buying up student loans, something like, you know, $5 million worth of debt you can buy for under a million dollars. They're taking in donations to do that. And basically then they're just excusing the debt. There was a story in, uh, in the uh, newspaper not too long ago where they bought up all the student debt from one uh, private for-profit college and excuse all those loans. And the, the private for-profit colleges, they have really high tuition, so this is like a big deal. And so anyway, we could either do that or we could refinance it. Again, like, I, like my friend, you know, the one with the $950 a month. If you refinance her, her loan, it would give her more money and it would give, um, she would be putting that money back into the economy. Number five. Oh, that's the end of number five. Okay. So, number four, fully fund public education. Everybody's saying, well, how is the state ever going to come up with that $317 million that they owe the public education? This is something that they could do. They could use the money from a public bank, especially after it got going and get some profits. They could fund the, pu the public <coughs> education, the money that they owe the, uh, the uh, school children because of the... Uh, when they, uh, they were supposed to keep the state funding for schools at a certain level in line with the uh, inflation, and when they started cutting, they stopped doing that. So they owe a lot of money to schools, and this would be one way to pay them back. Uh, number three, this one is a no-brainer as far as I'm con concerned. Foster university-based spin-off businesses. These are the best jobs in Tucson as far as I'm concerned. I worked at the University of Arizona for 14 years. I wrote about this all the time. The university's got all kinds of data that says if you give $10,000 seed grant to a young scientist to run some experiments and get some good data that he can use then to apply for millions of dollars from the NIH, it's a good investment. So I think that we should be giving seed grants to scientists. You can have competitions. I remember the first time I met um, Carmen Cajero, Carmen Cajero Bedford, or <laughs> Carmen Cajero, it's Olivia Cajero Bedford's mom. She came to the cancer center to meet with the scientists at the, at the cancer center to hear their little presentations. And then the legislature actually said, okay, we're going to give grants to, to these like five people, 10000 each. Not a lot of money, $50,000, right? But what scientists can do with seed grants and is, is amazing. The other thing is that we have people down at the university and at the other universities in Arizona, they're inventors. They're inventing things. They're inventing new drugs. They're inventing medical devices and things like that. And when they have a, an idea that's viable, they have to go to Wall Street to get money to capitalize that, and to make that business, to start it up, right? The public bank is a perfect ally in this because they can give them a lower loan, they don't have to sell off part of their idea to Wall Street, and they can grow it here. In fact, we were at a, we were at a faculty party not that long ago, and I was telling telling somebody about this and, and one of the faculty wives and she goes, come over here, you have to tell my husband, he's doing this right now, he's trying to get money from Wall Street and he can't, you go tell him what you're doing, you know, and so I think this is a great idea and I, I don't know about you guys, but war is against my religion and it bugs me that Tucson has this war-based economy, we can have a technology-based economy if we grew it and we're not doing that right now. Again, the local first idea. What do we have? We have artists and musicians and cactus and we have scientists. So let's grow those people and grow their ideas and their businesses. Number two, protect taxpayer funds. You know, especially now after the Congress just said that if the Wall Street gets in trouble, they'll give them another bailout. What our money is at risk when it sits on Wall Street. Again, they, they said to the Bank of North Dakota, 
was the only state that didn't crash when the Wall Street crashed. And that's because they had their, their investments at home in small, low-cost loans to students and to entrepreneurs and to farmers and to small businesses rather than being extravagant with the derivatives and things like that on Wall Street. So this protects our money by having it here. <coughs> and the number one reason is that, and I'm not saying it's a bipartisan economic solution, I'm saying it's a nonpartisan economic solution because uh, people from all parties are interested in public banking. The first, uh, the first couple of public bank proposals that were put up in Arizona were actually put forward by Republicans, okay? Last year, Andrew D'Alessandro put up a task force to study public banking. This year, Steve's working with some Republicans, and he'll tell you more about what he's doing. So the idea is that it's, it's not a Democratic idea, it's not a progressive idea, it's not a Republican idea, it's an idea that people can understand, because they think, yeah, bring my money home and, and invest it here to grow, our, uh, to grow and to help the citizens of the state. It, seemed, it just it makes sense, okay? So the other thing is that the, uh, the original Bank of North Dakota, they didn't say it in the little video, it was started by a group called the Nonpartisan League. And they were a group of farmers, primarily, who were tired of having their farms foreclosed on by Wall Street bankers. Sound familiar? You know, Steve told us about a meeting that he went to where the, we have growers down in the Yuma area in the southern Arizona, and they're having their bank accounts canceled by Wall Street bankers now, and they can't get capital. So here we have history repeating itself with Wall Street, you know, making decisions that, that help them, but they don't help us. So again, uh, it's a nonpartisan economic uh, solution to raise revenue without raising taxes. So... Uh, next steps, that's my 10, 10 reasons. The next stop steps are, uh, what we're suggesting is that uh, there be some sort of data gathering to see where we are now, you know. So, for example, assess, you know, what, how small businesses get their credit. Are they using credit cards? Are they using payday loans? Uh, are they going out of business because they can't, ex can't expand? Uh, we should look at community banks versus Wall Street banks as far as who's lending. You know, the other thing is the status of the community banks. Are they healthy or not? There was just an article in the Star the other day saying that some of them are doing good and others are not doing well. You know, we I think we're down to like maybe ten. You know, and and like I said, it's they're they're losing ground because they don't have the money to lend. Whereas with the public bank, we could give them money. They write the loans, and but the bank the, the state backs it or the city backs it. I also think that we should do a little bit of survey about personal debt. I mean, is there a need? My, my sense is that there is a need for debt relief or, or refinancing for citizens. But, you know, we don't really know. In some of this, there is a, a um, City of Tucson Poverty, Poverty Commission. So, they, again, they might have some of this data. Uh, the other thing is to look at the, assess the status of the infrastructure. We were just at a conference in Santa Fe, and Santa Fe is looking at a public bank for their city, and the, the state of New Mexico is also looking at a state bank. So they're kind of on a parallel track with what we are doing here in Arizona. And they have done an assessment of their infrastructure, and theirs is a mess. And so they know what they're up against as far as, you know, what needs to be fixed and how much it might cost. And then the other thing is to look at the state's assets or the city's assets. You know, what buildings does, does the government own? What land do they own? Uh, should it be sold? Could it be used? Could that be part of part of the mix? And so these are just kind of ideas on sort of the data we might want to gather as a baseline. And then also, obviously, we're going to follow bills in the legislature. You can sign up on those little pieces of paper I pass around to be a supporter on our website. We'd love you to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and that's the end of my show. Now we're going to get to the technical part. <laughs>